coverage of the tragedy in Tucson with a closer look at the shooter. This violent act has left many of us to wonder what could cause someone to do such a thing. He was described as a loner by many and had several minor run-ins with the law, also suspended from his college for his strange and even erratic behavior. So what are the red flags that we should be aware of to prevent such an incident in the future? Licensed mental health counselor Janie Lacey from the Total Life Counseling Center joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Heidi. I hate to have to talk about something like this in retrospect, but hopefully this is something that might help others in the future. I think we've all at some point had someone that we work with, went to school with, known in our lives that we thought, you know what, this person's going to snap. It seems like they're on the edge, so it's something that's not that rare. When tragedies happen like this, and it's very, very sad, a lot of people look back and they say, it's not surprising to me. They see all the red flags, but people don't know what to do with those red flags, or they don't know what to look for, but it makes sense to them after it happens. They can say, you know, he was this, he was that, and we're not surprised. I think we're kind of taught to stay out of other people's business, mm -hmm. so we'll get to how to take care of that in a minute, but let's talk a little bit about the warning signs you should be looking for. You say the first thing is obsession. What mm -hmm. kind of obsession? What they'll tend to look back, and one of the red flags as we'll see is there's been obsession with aggression or violent thoughts, and sometimes it comes out if they're in school it comes out in their writing or their thought processes and in conversations in their class discussions or if they have blogs on Facebook posts so people will see that there's something off about their thoughts and it's a violent aggression type of thought and this seemed to uh, be the case with this guy in school that even his classmates and his teachers mm -hmm. saw this so that's where that red flag and maybe that help could have come in you say the next thing is paranoia right they lose a sense with of reality they'll look at things and they have this paranoid sense of being and people will even say to them, they were so paranoid, they would think this, they would think that. And, and it comes out a lot in their conversations with other people. And again, their postings, there usually is a retrospect. We can look back and say, boy, he was paranoid. What about the withdrawn personality? You say that's one of them. How do you know the difference between someone who just likes to be on their own and is quiet and somebody who maybe needs a little help? There is a difference between someone that's just introverted and just wants to be by themselves and they enjoy that. When we look at someone that has an antisocial type personality, you usually see some of the other warning signs along with it. The aggression, the violent thoughts, you know, the paranoia, the potential drug use, which will exasperate the aggression and the, the paranoia thoughts and things of that nature. So it's usually not, not just one by itself. They just are not just isolated type personality. The last thing you say is radical belief system. And before mm -hmm. we let you go, I just want to ask real quick if you see this in someone that you know who do you tell what is the avenue you go through to make sure that this person gets the help they need and that's exactly the question a lot of people ask not everyone that has these symptoms will act out and actually kill someone but if we do see those signs if we're in a college campus we can reach out to mental health professionals the human resource department express our concerns and there is something that's usually in a lot of states they're called different things but there's bait brack laws if we feel someone's a harm to themselves or a harm to others we can seek either police or mental health professionals where they can take them in and get evaluated for 72 hours and that's the extent of what most people can do initially. Jenny Lacey from Total Life Counseling Center thank you so much for that information hopefully it'll help others if they see someone in their life who needs that help thank, thank you. you. A lot of times when we look at couples they'll say that they're getting married because they love each other but then when you ask them what does that mean then they don't know what to say. You have a detox period you stop having the behavior but then you also the other component is you have to learn to have a healthy sexual relationship so when you think about how that shaped your life, look at how it's shaping the lives of our young people today.